All right, lads, things are a little bit different this time because for this video, I'm giving us a budget and I can't wait to show you all of the horrible ways I managed to spend the money. Hi again, lads, and welcome back to my poor decision-making skills. They'll never get better. Now hear me out on this one. Only fans. Recently, that site has blown up in a big way, as typically happens when you explode. And it's basically a place where you can upload whatever pictures or videos you want of you doing whatever you want. And for people to get those things that you post, they have to pay you a monthly subscription. There's other ways people can charge money for what they post to the site, but the subscription model is the most familiar and looks like it's the most popular one that creators are using. Now, speaking of the people on the site, some of the biggest names there are ones you already know, because they're from YouTube. And I mean like mainstream YouTube. Like there are some people here that you would have seen on David Dobrik's vlogs before it was dead in the water like my first goldfish. Sources tell me that he drowned, but I know better because he's a fish. But because there's so many to choose from and they all cost money, it's just not practical for one person to be buying all of these. So it falls to me, the uh, expert, to do just that. That's right, I bought these five YouTubers only fans, and in today's video we're gonna be individually reviewing them all. And after we've taken our traumatizing look through, we're gonna rank them and figure out which YouTubers only fans you should be purchasing. Purchasing. The correct answer is you should not be buying any of them, but please just let this slide for the sake of the gag. Now sadly, that meant spending a decent amount of money on this video, so if you guys are enjoying yourself so far, please drop a like and consider subscribing with notifications on. This is a threat, yes, but you have nothing to worry about if you just go ahead and subscribe. With that said, let's get to clapping our hands and, uh, clapping other stuff too. Hello everyone. Happy James Day. First up is Nikocado Avocado, who's most well known for eating food and crying, usually at the same time, and both of which he's very good at. I think the food part might have something to do with his incredibly wide asshole, it just looks like a sarlacc pit. But after I had subscribed to all the accounts I was going to, a few of them sent me welcome messages, if you will, where they're actually just messaging you to buy even more things from them. Nico sent one, and even though he asked nicely, unfortunately, I will not be paying to watch him come over and over and then make Orlin come too. Who's Orlin? It's three dollars, man. That's steep. I could buy a nine ounce bag of Skittles with that. This account is going to start you off at $15 a month, and for that price, you do get a lot of content. The avocado has been in this game for a long time. He has nearly 400 pieces of content for you to look through. Somewhere around 270 pictures and 120 videos, making it enough to start a subreddit with. Now there's a kind of duality to Nico's OnlyFans, because in those 400 things to look at, there's a lot of variety, but there's also a lot of the same thing over and over again. On this page, we can find Nico in all sorts of situations. Uh, pics of his butthole, pics of his dick, uh, side note, he is not snipped if that's important to you. There's stuff of him tonguing someone else's wiener, there's solo shots, pics of his tits, there's even pics of skinny Nikocado in here. But even though he's doing a lot of different things, he tends to take a lot of pictures of whatever that thing is. And that's where the bulk of the numbers come from. He's got like six identical pictures of his wrinkly cock, and I don't need that many. I don't even need one of them on a normal day. There's a lot of that, a lot of videos that are just the full versions of what's happening in the pictures. And I don't know how I feel about that. It feels like the pictures are kind of worthless if a video of what was happening in that picture exists and is readily available. I don't need to imagine the action happening anymore. I can just watch it and be lazy. I've talked a lot about how much stuff there is and what's happening in it, but nothing of how it makes me feel. And the answer is nothing. My nuts go cold and numb and recede inside of me. These pics do nothing for me. Perhaps you would have better luck though. I would recommend the Nikocado Avocado OnlyFans to a person who likes A, men, and B, wasting money. I'm sure it'll be to somebody's taste, but if it is, then you have none. No, we're not going to school today. Belle Delphine is up next, and despite her being known for making the funny sex face, she's actually pretty new to OnlyFans as a whole. She came back with that 6 9 music video parody, and it was actually just one giant viral ad for this thing. So after going through all that trouble just to tell me that the thing exists, how good is it? Well, right off the bat, it costs $35 a month, a steep-ass price, making it the most expensive monthly subscription of any of the accounts that we're going to be looking at today. I don't know what it is with Belle in that $30 figure. Like, I'm pretty sure her bathwater costs around the same. Maybe she's hinting that that's the age she'll be when she finally drops nudes. Speaking of which, the Belle Delphine OnlyFans is entirely entirely lewd. There is not a naked pic in sight. She gets pretty close sometimes, like in real life she'll have her coochie hanging out, but in the pic she'll be holding a phone over her flap so you don't get to see it. And she had to use the latest iPhone for the sensor to just rub it in your face how much money she's making off of you. There's other ways of censoring she's used, like putting paint on the pussy, which just kind of shows how bad she is at painting. Like, she got it all over herself and the new flooring. I said Belle was new to OnlyFans, in fact she's the newest OnlyFans of the ones we're covering, but that hasn't stopped her from putting out a 
bunch of shit. Like, in terms of raw amount, she has even more than Nika Kato. 368 photos, 49 videos, over 400 pieces of content altogether, and not a single one is good. Okay, that's not strictly true, it's just not good to me. And to be fair, I'm not exactly the target audience for OnlyFans stuff to start with. I just happen to be paying for it as a bit. To them, there's no difference because they get paid either way, but I know the truth. Someone like me would probably use a free service for their porn needs, you know, because I don't have to pay for it. But Belle has a couple pictures on her OnlyFans where she is advertising one of these free services. A niche up-and-coming competitor called, uh, Porn hub? And it just doesn't make sense to me why she's wearing all this stuff that promotes a competitor. It's just bad business practice, man. Unless... It's a gag! Most of her stuff is albums with a bunch of different photos and videos of Belle in a given outfit like that Pornhub one. Whether it's a cosplay of a character or just some outfit that fits her usual kawaii aesthetic. No matter which image you're looking at, you'll probably find a whole lot of pink in it, but it'll never be the pussy. Some of this stuff is definitely better than others, too. Like, you can tell which ones are some crummy selfie that Belle probably took with Snapchat, and which ones had someone working the lighting, setting up props, and just putting overall more production quality into the photo shoot. Miss Delphine's OnlyFans is very mixed, and it is for a certain niche. This feels like something you would only really buy as a gag, even though I know that's definitely not what most people are doing. I would recommend buying the OnlyFans if you're gonna make a video on it. Crack them views, baby. Before we jump into Trisha's segment, let me explain a concept on OnlyFans to you. Typically, the older an account, the more value for your dollar you'd be getting by buying that. And here's why. When an OnlyFans account just starts, they usually don't have a backlog prepared, so early adopters are going to be paying full price for a limited amount of content. They're the risk takers, the ones who buy in when there's so little to work off of. It's the same problem as buying a console at launch. But let's say you wait three months for the amount of content to build up in a backlog. So when you pay for that subscription, you're going to not just get all of the new content that's still getting released, you're gonna get the backlog of content for all of those months you held off. And you'll be getting it for way less than the people who bought it at launch. For Trisha's OnlyFans, this is especially true. Not only has she been on OnlyFans the longest out of anyone in this video, I believe, but her page only costs five bucks right now. Kind of a steal. That's a temporary deal, so I don't know how long that'll last. But despite not having the most amount of raw content of anybody on this list, I think that between the content that's there and the price, you were getting the most bang for your buck out of Trisha's OnlyFans. Literally. Like, Trisha goes all in for her stuff. Like, nothing is off limits. She's got an endless seeming supply of dildos and other sex toys I don't know the names of. Sometimes she has a cameraman, but sometimes she's just recording that shit herself. A lot of times, you just don't know what you're getting, and looking through the catalog, there might just be a little something for everybody here. At times, she gets a little too specific about who a video is for, for my taste. Like, the time she uploaded some pics of her masturbating to the H3 podcast episode she was on. She doesn't do too many zany outfits like Belle, or just post a bunch of versions of the same image like Nika Kato, but what she does have is a lot of videos. Of some 200 pieces of content, most of them are vids, making her sex life more well documented than the War of 1812. I would recommend Trisha Paytas' OnlyFans to somebody who doesn't know what they want yet, because this way you'll get thrown into the middle of it, and if you don't figure it out, you'll perish. <laughs> Onion Man. God, I don't know why I chose to do this one at all. So, pricing is kinda weird with Onision. Uh, you can buy your subscriptions in bundles. It's $5.40 for one month, for limited time only. Uh, it's $21.58 for three months, $39.54 for six, and $71.94 for a full year. I can't imagine jacking it to Onision for 12 months straight but it is 50% off. Onision's OnlyFans is very unique for a number of reasons, but mainly because it's the one OnlyFans I can think of whose content has gone through literal metamorphosis. There's over 600 photos and videos on Onision's page, but it wasn't always of him. At first, all Onision was posting were these deeply weird 3D models of himself. Most of them are completely unintelligible. That or I refuse to look at them. Still trying to figure out which. And some of them come with strange captions like Sally loves carrot dick. It went on like this, unsettling me and destroying my morale for a little bit until one day Onision decided to post his real face. It started as a gag with Onision doing the female filter and face app or whatever. It continued as lewds of him in his underwear or him covering up his junk until eventually he just said fuck it and posted his whole ass cock. I couldn't tell you what made him change his mind, but he went mask off as soon as he did. These days he's posting all sorts of stuff. He's got feet pics, pics of him doing stuff with dildos, you name it. It feels like he's trying to hit every market that he can with what he's posting now. I don't know what made him go from the 
the weird 3D stuff to being a pretty typical OnlyFans account, but if I had to guess, it probably has something to do with his Patreon getting suspended. That was his main source of income, and now it's gone. <laughs> so I'd imagine he's trying to bank as much as he can off of all this OnlyFans stuff. The pictures themselves are pretty standard. Most of it is just shirtless mirror selfies. It looks like a couple of the pics he set up a tripod, called in his wife to take the picture for him a couple times, but even then, it's just not as engaging as any of the other pages we've looked at so far. I would recommend the Onision OnlyFans to nobody. There is nothing here for you. Turn back. <laughs> 10 Emojo is our final account for today, and you have no idea how happy I'm going to be to put this part of my life behind me. Now, Tana's OnlyFans is also unique, because while it's free to subscribe, not all the content is. Following the account, or getting a free subscription, as OnlyFans calls it, is indeed free, and it gets you pretty much all the safe for work posts. Videos of Tana doing stuff she'd probably do on normal social media, like her eating a watermelon, her shaking her ass while clothed, her saying there is something inside her pussy, maybe some lightly lewd stuff, basically anything not super explicit. And if you want anything more than that, you're gonna have to start opening up your wallet. So, uh, I personally hate the way she has payment set up on the paid for posts because it's trash. You have to pay individually for every post that is locked behind a paywall, and the prices are different on each post. So you could pay anywhere from like three to twenty dollars on each one. Sometimes it's even more expensive than that, but after buying all the posts, you'll realize that they're all just lewds as well. It's usually just videos of Tana doing essentially nothing while still clothed. It doesn't bother me that much because I get the business expense it, but for anybody thinking about buying these, it ain't worth it. Tana also sent me a welcome message like Nikocado did, but I'll tell you, it did not make me feel welcome because it boils down to, can I borrow $200? You knew you'd find me here sooner or later. Throw bands and get my attention. Tip $200 to be in my VIP club and get unlimited chats. Smoke with me, drink with me, and see me like you've never seen me before. And truly see Tana uncensored. Tip $200? You'll probably send me a video of you reading Puff the Magic Dragon for that, with how much smoke you've been blowing up my ass. Uncensored? Maybe. Worth it? Absolutely not. Not even the camera quality is incredible or anything. It's all just videos taken on phones, the usual stuff she posts. But now you have to pay 20 bucks for it. The only type of person I would recommend Tana Mojo's OnlyFans to is someone who is a fan of her. Not a fan that would like to have sex with her, only a fan. Because what she is posting here is just more of the same shit she probably posted to her Insta story 10 minutes ago. And the only reason you should buy her OnlyFans as it stands is if you just want more of that, with like maybe 2% more edge to it. All right, now that we've seen all the candidates, it's time to start ranking. At the first signs of motion sickness, pull them out and let their stomach calm down. First off, in last place, it's Onision. There is just no reason to buy this damn thing. In fourth place, we have Tana Mojo. There is just no reason to buy this damn thing. In third place is Belle. I wouldn't get this OnlyFans if you were hoping for something more than lewds, and also because of how goddamn expensive it is. $35? To me, OnlyFans just seems like the next iteration in the Belle Delphine cycle, where basically every time she's popped up is because people think they're finally gonna see her nudes. But she plays them every time. It's happened three times now. What with Patreon, the Pornhub clickbait, and now OnlyFans. You guys are never gonna learn, and I prefer it that way, so I can keep making videos on it. Second place goes to Nika Kato. There's a lot of backlog to work through, a lot of versatility, even if I find none of it appealing. There's certain to be someone out there who would get more out of that subscription than I would. And finally, that leaves Trisha Paytas in first place as the top YouTuber OnlyFans. The thing that did it for me was the price point. $5? I know that's not a permanent price, but she has the most amount of what I think some people would consider good shit at the lowest price point. Whereas Tana made me pay a fuck ton of money to get absolutely nothing worth making jokes about. And after all the purchases have been made, the video ended up costing $143.40. $143.40 spent on OnlyFans. Well, at least I know where the lowest point in my life is. And hey, if you guys enjoyed, please be sure to drop a like and subscribe with Dota San. I really need this video to do well so I can justify these purchases to myself. I am actually begging you guys. You can follow me on Twitter at Quite, on Instagram at Quite.png, and on TikTok at Quite TikTok. Anyways, this has been Quite, and I will see you guys next time.